Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, what's up, what's up, Sero here, and today we're going to be going over some of the cards, or rather all of the cards from the Targon second part of the expansion for Monuments of Power. Um, this expansion so far is shaping up to look pretty interesting, I'm very excited to actually play with the new cards in a couple of days, but for now I want to just kind of give my, uh, my opinion, my initial thoughts on the cards now that we actually have all of them here. So we'll go over them in the order that they were revealed, and we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it from there. So... The first one we're going to talk about is a new mechanic. We have, we're actually going to have two of them. And this mechanic is called Landmark. And now these are essentially, if you've played Magic, Landmarks are essentially enchantments as far as I can tell. They play somewhat like units. You put them onto the board, but they can't go to combat. They don't have stats, but they can, they can be destroyed by certain types of removal, but only removal that can hit Landmarks. So the first card that we're going to talk about is Vault of Hylia. <laughs> Helia, uh, I suppose. I, I think Hylia from, uh, from Legend of Zelda. So Vault of Hylia is going to do uh, 5 cost. It's going to round start, kill the most expensive unit that you have, and you're going to summon one from your deck that costs one more. So this reminds me of a card from Magic called Birthing Pod, uh, which was actually a very powerful card. It ended up getting banned. Um, it would essentially allow you to build certain types of toolbox decks. Now, the, de the difference is is that with uh, Birthing Pod, you got to choose what you wanted to pull out. This is going to pull something something randomly. Uh, if say you have two four cost units and you kill a three cost, it's going to be bringing back one of the two four cost randomly. So if there's a way that you can build your deck <clears throat> that it's going to your your vaults of Hylia is going to be killing something every turn and working you up this chain, helping you get to this big bomb unit, and this big bomb unit is going to be your win condition. If you can build a deck that's going to work like that, I can imagine vaults of Hylia being very powerful. But with just with the way that we see vaults right now and with the cards that we have right now, I really don't see how you use this card, what you're really supposed to use it with. Um, like, I would want to use this with Undying, but really, what are you getting from Undying? If you're killing off a, an Undying, you can get a Grizzled Ranger, I guess. That's not great. Killing off a Grizzled Ranger can get you, like, a Radiant Guardian. That's kind of cool. But I don't really think... I don't really think that's where you want to be with this card. Maybe it is good enough, but I think, I think this card might be good, but I think it's going to take some time. So the next one we got is the Slaughter Docks. Now this is going to be a Bilge Water Landmark. And this card is going to, at the start of every turn, it's going to toss one. And then if you're deep, you destroy the Landmark and you summon a random sea monster. So this card is quite good. So if you think about the, um... If you think about the 2-mana 1-4 or the 3-mana three 3-2 three Lifesteal, yeah, those guys are great because they come down, they, they, they fight for the board a little bit, and then they eventually get you deep. The, this one, on the other hand, is not going to fight for board when you play it, but it's going to gradually get you deeper and deeper into your deck until you're actually deep, and then it'll summon you a 6-6 six, six Elusive, or it'll summon you a 7-7, seven, seven, something like that. So you're you're getting the stats for this that you pay for this card later on, but you're getting the same amount of tosses usually, maybe even more tosses than you would get from the 2-drop or from the 3-drop. So I think this card is actually quite good for deep. I'm not 100% if deep is actually going to be relevant though moving forward. Uh, next card that we have is Sunk Cost, 8 mana slow speed. Shuffle a unit or landmark into the deck. Uh, we see this thing that Bilgewater just tends to get like a lot of removal. But it's kind of, in some in a lot of spots it's worse than other, other removals. And that's kind of what's going on with this one. This is just like a bad vengeance I think. And we're actually going to get to another card. It's a 5 cost Shadow Isles card. Somewhat similar to this. But it really just goes to show how how bad the removal uh, Bilgewater gets. I think the, the the best thing to compare the bad removal that Bilgewater gets to is if you look at Vengeance and you look at Scrapshot, the two cards cost the same. They're both the same speed. But one is just clearly better at doing its job than the other. And and Bilgewater just kind of gets these, these removals that aren't good at doing their job. And I think that's what Sunk Cost is. It's just a bad removal spell. Lounging Lizard, 3 mana, 3, 5, Elusive. So, great stat line. Unfortunately, around start, you do 2 damage to this card. So, this is a 3, 5 on the turn you play it. It'll get in its 3 damage. And then, if you get the attack token again, it'll get to do it again. And I suppose that's pretty good. But I don't think it's fantastic. But where this these cards and these next few cards are going to shine is going to be in Tom Kench's archetype, which we'll get to Tom Kench in a second. And I think I'm I'm, not, I'm really not sure. Like I don't think three mana three five a lot elusive. I don't think a lot of decks are interested in this. But I think the Tom Kench deck is going to be interested in quite a few of these next few cards that we're going to be looking at. So Fortune Croaker, 2 mana, 2, 3, play. Deal 1 damage to me and an ally to draw 1. So as we know, dealing damage to your own stuff 
can be very valuable. We've seen with like Crimson Disciple, all the Crimson units really love taking damage. So I think um, the Fortune Croaker is quite good. It's got a, it's just got a very good stat line and it replaces itself, right? It draws you a card. I think this is actually probably the best card in Tom Kench's uh, little toolbox. I think Fortune Croaker is a fantastic card. We've got the Boxtopus. The Boxtopus is a two mana, three, four challenger. I love this card's name. It's just kind of funny. It's just, just a little, a boxing octopus, man. It's just, it's clean, it's a clean, clean little joke. So this guy is like two mana. He's essentially a two mana, three, one challenger. And then if you get to, you combo him with Tom Kench, he gets, he becomes somewhat better. Uh, this guy kind of reminds me of, he reminds me of Jaw Hunters. And he reminds me of the other one, the two mana Noxus one. He's a, it's a five, one challenger that can't block. It kind of reminds me. It's, it's fulfilling a similar role to those two cards. This card is just going to be like decent removal. It's frail, but it, it'll, it's a role player. It'll get the job done in the deck it's supposed to be playing in. <clears throat> so we got Krusty Codger. I like this one too. And actually, if you look at the Krusty, if you look at the Boxtopus's art, you can see the Krusty Codger like right over here in it, which is kind of funny. This card is phenomenal. One mana, two, four, takes two damage when you play it. So it's essentially a one mana, two, two that can be healed. And that's fantastic because a one mana two two as we already know is just fantastic so this card is just top tier tippity top tier crusty codger is crumble five mana slow kill an ally to kill a unit or destroy a landmark so it comes at, it comes at the cost of being vulnerable right because if your ally dies as you try to crumble the, the spell is going to fizzle but this card is very versatile right it's 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 slow as well right so you can't it's not like e the easiest thing in the world to play but it's you're getting a very good deal for your five mana you're killing something and you could even be killing a landmark which as we can assume landmarks are going to be kind of tough to kill moving forward we're going to get ways to kill to kill landmarks but i have a feeling there's going to be more playable landmarks than there are going to be more playable ways to remove landmarks at least in the first couple of expansions uh, or at least the first early parts of the expansion. I think that's how it's going to be. So I believe having access to some type of removal like Crumble, I think this is going to be a pretty decent card. I think Shadow Isles might be interested in this moving forward. Tom Kench, uh, four mana, two, six. And th so he's got a lot of things going on. Every turn he makes an acquired taste. So acquired taste lets you swallow an enemy unit and then that unit strikes him and then he captures it. So it's sort of like a weird single combat uh, that, that you're getting with acquired taste. And then once Tom Kench has captured three things, He's going to level up and then obliterate all the captured enemies and then release captured allies. And when, okay, so, so with, um, with the Bayou Brunch, with this card, he's going to be able to capture allies and then gain their stats. Now, I'm not sure if they gain their stats after they've taken damage. So with Krusty Codger, I'm not sure if he's going to get plus two, plus two, or if he's going to get plus two, plus four. If he's getting plus two, plus four, this, that's, you can very easily make Tom Kench quite beefy. And what will happen is Tom Kench will just get a lot of things inside him, like right? Like, he'll eat a lot of things, and then he'll just become this... Every turn, he's a removal. He You get the acquired taste every turn, he gets, to, he gets to eat the thing, right? And then he gets to attack and then obliterate whatever he captured. So Tom Kench is going to be like this weird removal unit that kind of like... He's bulky enough that he's not easy to remove... I, this is a really hard card to evaluate honestly tom kench but i think he's quite good i think he's just so diff i think he's going to be difficult enough to remove he's going to be bulky and he's going to if he is not removed he's going to remove something every turn so once he hits the board he like once he hits the board he threatens to to eat things and then level up and then once he's leveled up he threatens the board even more so and he's like a ticking time bomb until if you can't kill him before he levels up he's going to like blow up the board because as he eats things with the bayou brunch he himself is going to get much bulkier and then once he spits them all out they're going to be they're going to be just even beefier than what you originally paid for right that one mana two two is actually a two four the box the puss is now going to be a three four challenger fortune croaker is going to be a two three lounging lizard is going to be a three five like he's just going to make a lot of stats i think this guy is pretty decent but he's he's tricky to evaluate and it's kind of hard to imagine what a tom kench deck would look like so i'm not really sure about this one uh shakedown um i don't think this card is particularly great one mana burst speed makes this card very versatile very flexible very easy to play but i think it's just kind of weak but maybe i'm wrong you're going to be dealing two to an ally to grant two enemies vulnerable so what is interesting about this is if you think about the tempo swings that blighted caretaker can create this card can kind of create the same types of tempo swings where it makes the it makes rather than giving two enemies vulnerable 
um, the caretaker just makes two challengers immediately and it lets everything else get through. This is burst speed, so you can kind of do the same type of thing with Shakedown, but I'm not sure if Shakedown is actually worth the card that it's costing you in your hand. But it's very possible, actually, that the tempo that Shakedown provides is worth more than the card that it's that it costs. So it could be that Shakedown is a good card, but I kind of... I think it's so value light that this is a kind of hard card to make good. But it is worth noting that this card grants vulnerable. It doesn't give it vulnerable until the end of the turn. So Shakedown could get there, man. It, it could. It really could. Uh, six mana, three, eight. We have Wise Fry. Uh, Wise Fry, when you play him, he's going to do one damage to every other ally. And then he's going to get stats. So I think you could imagine this guy is going to be like a five or six eight overwhelm maybe sometimes a seven eight or an eight eight that seems a little high rolly but hey maybe it could happen he himself is vulnerable but so that's not great but this guy is kind of beefy like a six eight for six that's that's hard to remove this guy is probably going to be attacking two times that might be enough to pressure the opponent but i kind of think this card requires too much setup to be good but who knows man who knows maybe this maybe this one gets there i don't really think it does though so next we have the Howling Abyss. Howling Abyss is going to be a 7 mana landmark. At round start, it's going to create a random level 2 champion that's not in your hand, deck, or in play. And that's pretty... It's, it's cool, right? Like it's, it's a cool card, but I'm not... This is the kind of card that I'm super happy to exist in Runeterra as long as this card isn't actually competitively viable. Because I think this card introduces far too much RNG into the game for it to be healthy for the competitive scene. And that's just, that's a, another thing altogether. I think this card itself is pretty entertaining. It'll make some funny game states. You can play this with your friends and it'll make some cool things happen. Voices of the Old Ones. I believe this is the best ramp spell we've ever gotten in Runeterra. I think a lot of the ramp cards that we have in Runeterra are just like playable. They're not actually good. I think Voices of the Old Ones is actively very good. Voices of the Old Ones is eight cost. So it enables your behold for the eight cost behold units that care about it. This thing ramps you two times. It gives you two empty mana gems. And unlike Catalyst of Aeons, once, like, it, Catalyst costs five, right? This is going to cost you eight. Unlike Catalyst, where once you're at 10 mana, Catalyst is essentially useless except for the three health that it gives you, Voices is still going to be drawing you cards because for the top four cards of your deck, you draw each one that costs eight or more. So I think in the, the decks that are built around, and this can draw you more voices too. So your voices of the old ones can find like a, a unit or two units and another voices of the old ones. I think this card is quite good. Uh, Crystal Ibex, 4 mana, 4, 4, grant an ally overwhelm. I don't think this card is particularly good. This seems like draft shaft to me. We're just going to move on from this one. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that card is good. It seems just like filler to me. Sneaky Zeebles, 5 mana, 3, 3. I love this card's name, dude. Uh, I don't get what it does. It's a 5 mana, 3, 3, so it's expensive. It's got a weak stat line. It's elusive, which is kind of cool. And then when you play it, you stun enemies with 2 power or less. Um, that seems like it's not hitting a lot of things. I don't think this is particularly good. So we'll just move on. Star Spring is going to be a two mana landmark, which is incredibly cheap. At the end of every round, it's going to heal damaged allies for one. And then once you've seen it heal 22 damage, you win the game immediately. So I imagine this card is very good. Uh, I think this card is actually very, very good. Maybe I'm wrong, but I believe this card is not going to be... I don't believe it's going to be hard to fulfill the win condition of this deck. I think Soraka herself is a very good champion. We'll take a look at her in a minute. But I think this win the game condition is actually very feasible to hit. And I think the, the healing for one every turn, that alone is pretty solid. And at the low, low cost of two mana, that's nuts. And you could like you could have two of these on the board, and then it really starts making your board very tough to deal with. They start blocking every turn. And your board is just very tough to deal with with a Star Spring on board. So I think this card is very good. Spring Gifts is going to be a slow cost, or slow one cost spell, fully heal an ally, sure. Um can't imagine decks are actually interested in this but hey maybe they are i can't imagine that they are though uh three mana three three spring guardian when i'm summoned create a spring gifts in hand okay so that's this card so actually spring i'm not sure if spring gifts is a card you can actually put in your deck it doesn't have a gem on it so it might not be actually so uh three mana three three put the spring gifts in your hand that itself is quite good i think that's a playable card um so yeah th this card is quite good Divergent Paths, 3 mana, draw a landmark or destroy a landmark. Excellent card. Excellent, excellent, excellent card. In Soraka, this is going to find your Star Spring win condition. 
or in another because like, you don't have to play this in a targon deck right like you like you don't have to play this in a deck that's pulling the targon card targon landmark you can play it in a deck that's pulling a different landmark so this is going to find you your win condition or find or destroy your enemy win condition for the low cost of three mana at fast speed this card is excellent divergent paths excellent Soraka, I'm super excited to play this card. Um, Soraka is a 3-mana 1-6, becomes a 2-7. Uh, when she attacks, she's going to support and heal herself and her ally for 4. So she herself is just going to be a nuisance. She's bulky enough to not really die often in combat. And she's going to be healing up her friends quite a bit, making them obnoxious to deal with. And now, the part that really gets me hyped. The first time you heal a damaged ally each round, draw one. Fantastic. So now, Soraka, on top of just being a beefy 1-6 or 2-7 wall, she's going to be drawing you a card every turn. And that kind of that kind of card draw becomes oppressive very quickly. That, that kind of card draw is going to take over a game for sure. Stargazer. 4 mana, 3-4. When you heal a damaged ally, give it elusive this round. Um, yeah, this, this gives you a win condition, I suppose. I don't believe it's well statted. Uh, I think this card is underwhelming for the most part. Astral Protection, heal an ally 4 and grant it plus 0 plus 4 at burst speed. So this makes a unit, like, just gives it 8 health for 4 mana. That's very beefy, but this might be, like, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the card. It's the Freljord 4 cost spell that gives 2 units 3 health. I can't, it's, it's not Brothers Bond. It's the, the Freljord version of, like, the HP Brothers Bond. I forget the name of the card. That card kind of reminds me of this, but I think this card's better, but then again, that card wasn't particularly played, so I don't think this card is going to be particularly played, but maybe, but probably not. I don't think Astral Protection is very good. Soraka's Wish, so you're, it's also going to be Wish, this is Soraka's Hero Spell. For 3 costs, that's low speed, fully heal all damaged allies, and then you shuffle Soraka into your deck. So, I don't think this is a card that you ever main deck, but as a champion spell for Soraka, this is definitely going to come up. There are going to be boards where you're like, yeah, I'm super happy to play my Soraka as a wish to heal my board. That's just worth it. So this card is quite good just to, for the sheer fact that it's a champion spell rather than a spell that you have to put in your deck. Five mana for the University of Piltover, another landmark. Brown star, discard your hand, create three random cards and grant them fleeting. So this is going to be, this is going to be giving you a ton of card advantage every turn, but you're going to be getting random stuff. Um, this seems like the Howling Abyss to me where I really hope this card isn't actually competitively playable because if it is, it's a very frustrating card to play against. But I, I believe this card is going to be quite entertaining. I can imagine labs based off of this stuff like that. Okay, Patched Porobot. I actually think this card is quite good. Two mana, two, three. While I'm in hand, I have a random key keyword and it changes every round. And then when it's summoned, you get that. The Poro gets that keyword. The Porobot is very... It's just well stat, right? Two mana, two, three, good stat line. So another Poro for Poro Tribal. And out of all the colors to get a uh, Poro, I think it's it's safe to say that the two best colors for Poro is Freljord's, Freljord and PNZ. So for PNZ to get another good Poro, that, 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 only, that can only be good for the Poro archetype. I don't know when Poros actually get there as an archetype, but Patch Porobot is an excellent Poro card for the Poro archetype for whenever that archetype actually gets there. Uh, three mana for a zero three Trevor snooze bottom support create an attacking mumble sprite with my supported allies stats so this guy himself sucks at attacking he's probably gonna die when he attacks but hey he's going to whatever he supports he's gonna make another copy of that and it's the and the mumble sprite is ephemeral is a it's ephemeral and it's elusive so the Mumble Sprite will actually be pushing some decent damage if he's supporting a good unit. But, man, this card seems like it has... The card itself sucks, right? 3 mana, 0, 3, that sucks. So it needs to be really supporting... It needs to be supporting something really good to be making the Mumble Sprite worth it. So I don't know. This is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. But maybe the, maybe this card... Because, like, this is an Ionia card, right? So this goes in the Lulu deck. So maybe Lulu can, see, can use this. But I don't think really Lulu has the use for this right now. Uh, Nopify. Okay, this card I think is one of the best cards of the set. So Nopify is going to be a two-cost counter spell. It's going to counter a fast or slow spell that costs three or less. And now this hits a very limited pool of cards in the game, but it hits some very noteworthy cards in the game as well. This is going to hit your single combats. This is going to hit other Nopifies. This is going to hit 
Man, I could I'm, I could say I can list so many cards, but they're actually like just not coming to my head. But this will hit Mystic Shot. This will get excited. This will hit... I don't know if this will hit something that had its cost reduced. So I'm not sure if this will hit a gotcha or not. This might hit a two cost gotcha. It might not. I'm really not sure how that works. I think it'll count as a four cost card on a stat on the stack. So I don't think Nopify can hit that. <clears throat> but it'll hit um, Glimpse the, Glimpse Beyond. Uh, or is it Glimpse the Unthinkable? I mean, this hit, this just hits so many things. I think Nopify is just going to be so good at solidifying the tempo that you have. This is so similar to Deny, but it's so much cheaper that it's able to it's able to create even more disgusting tempo swings that deny couldn't create that deny was able to create this creates better ones the the question is are there enough cards enough uh good spells in the meta game that this thing is hitting because if there aren't good enough spells in the meta game then this card ends up being absent from the meta game but if there are good targets nopify ends up coming back into the meta game i think nopify is going to be even if it's not even if Nopify sees very little play, this card is still format warping. This card is still going to make other decks are going to have to consider Nopify when they're building themselves, when when they're putting the deck together. Okay, so Nox Kyra, Ky Nox Kyra, Kyrea, Nox Kyra. Ky I, I'm very curious how you pronounce this one. Nox Kyra uh, Arena. It's a landmark. Rounds end. Your strongest ally and the weakest enemy strike each other. This is going to create a single combat every single turn, essentially. And this is going to be an excellent card. Uh, this is an excellent tool for just controlling the board. I think uh, this is very solid for Noxian control decks. I don't know what type of deck that looks, what that deck looks like, but I think this card is quite powerful. And I think this card, once it hits the hits play, it's going to just cr generate incredible amounts of card advantage over a couple of turns. So I'm very excited to see what a deck that uses this actually looks like. I think this card is quite decent though. I think it's decent. Scorched Earth, kill a damage unit or destroy a landmark. I think all the decks that were playing Guillotine are now going to be looking to play Scorched Earth. They essentially do the same thing. It, this one can't be replayed, of course, but it comes at the upside that it can destroy landmarks, which moving forward, that's probably going to be very relevant. So Scorched Earth is a quite strong card. Stony Suppressor. I love this card. If you guys have played Magic, if you know Thalia of, Th uh, Thalia of Thraben, I believe her name is, this card is nuts. This, this card is going to make it... As a as a two mana one three that makes spells cost one more, this card itself is incredibly difficult to remove because all the things that are going to remove this are going to cost significantly more than the Stony Suppressor itself costs. So this is for combo decks like Lee Sin, decks that want to use like gems or cast spells like Ezreal. The, this card is going to hose those decks. It's going to make it very hard for them to do their job while the while this Demacia based deck just gets to continue doing its build a board based game plan so i think stony suppressor is going to be able to just steal tempo from decks long enough for the, these demacia style decks to just beat you down before the spells can really take over i think this card is excellent i'm very excited to play with this one sharp sight give an ally plus two plus two and i can block units with elusive this round i love this card because now we have more ways to, to deal with elusives in demacia which was a region that really didn't have ways to deal with elusives so i think it's a creative way to give us ways to deal with elusives and alone two mana plus two plus two is an excellent combat trick we don't have any any combat tricks that do this at that rate and i think you're super happy to pay two mana for, for plus two plus two right we're, we're we've been super happy in the past, people have played the one mana version of the spell, the one mana Demacian buff spell, but that card just really didn't do enough. But we've seen with uh, with Mark of the Wild, no, that's not the name of the card, with the Freljord spell, the plus four, plus four, we've seen that card is insane. So if, if that plus four, plus four for four mana is great, I assume plus two, plus two for two mana is also great. So I think Sharp Sight is an excellent card. Stalking Broodmother, seven mana, six, six, Fury and Scout. I can only imagine this card is just filler. I don't think this card is going to be seeing play in any competitive decks. Dragon Guard Lieutenant, on the other hand, is a 2-mana 3-2 when I'm summoned. If you behold a dragon, grant me Challenger. This card is certainly going to see play in dragon decks. This card, 2-mana 3-2, is a good stat line. Giving it Challenger is even better. This guy is just excellent. He's going to control the board, let your dragons do their thing, let them put go face, all that kind of stuff. Egghead Researcher. I'm a little disappointed with this guy's name, but uh i digress the card itself is quite good two mana one three when i'm summoned create a dragon in hand a random dragon follower in hand and there are, uh, as we have seen with all of our other cards dragons are just good they're they're all well statted they're just solid solid units this card can pull you this this card can make you the the infinite mind splitter dude that card's nuts 
to just draw a free infinite mind splitter on your two mana one three this guy is just solid card advantage and this is just very very good card i, I like this card it's going to see a lot of play in competitive dragon decks i believe dragon guard lookout six mana three five so not great stats but if i'm when i'm summoned if you behold the dragon rally so i don't know if the dragon decks are actually interested in these expensive rallies but if they are interested in a rally on a stick well this is quite good right because now you're getting a unit that's going to apply pretty pretty decent pressure as a six mana three five it's not a great stat line you're getting like the stat line of a four cost but that rally is pretty pretty potent especially when you're dra when the cards you're rallying with are dragons they're big things i think this card might be decent this might be like solid top end to close a game out shivana shivana four mana three four attack give me plus one plus one this round so it's essentially a chill wind yeti when it attacks um so decent stat line it's gonna heal itself every turn for one which is also nice so it's like it's sort of better than a f in a way on it when it's attacking it's better than a four five because it's healing a little bit every turn but on defense it's a little bit worse and then once i've seen dragon allies deal 12 damage she turns into a dragon shivana now dragon shivana is gonna get plus two plus two every time she attacks so she becomes even even bigger she becomes a six seven and then she creates a, sh a fleeting strafing strike which is uh, an ally and an enemy strike each other, then if that ally is a dragon, heal it too. So this is essentially, it creates a single combat, a slightly more expensive single combat every turn, but it has upside if you have a dragon. And oh, so Dravana also gains fury once she becomes a dragon. I didn't realize she didn't have it when she wasn't a dragon. I think um, being a four cost, four five, that just generates uh, single combat like spells every turn. I think that's quite good. I think that's going to be pretty good for just gaining card advantage. And with all these units, all these dragons, they have fury, so they get, they have, they're going to get a power from the fury proc, and then they're going to heal too. So it's like they didn't even take damage. Shivana's confront, grant an ally tra challenger. Uh, shuffle Shivana into your deck. Uh, relatively weak burst, weak champion spell, but I think that's okay because Shivana herself is pretty solid, and I think. Just for three mana to grant something challenger, like, that's not great, but it is at burst speed, so you can kind of get your... There are some spots where you can just get your opponent with the challenger, and you just get the, get a chance to kill him. So I think it's quite good. Uh, it's not quite good, but it's 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 passable as a champion spell. You will cast it as a Shivana's Confront every now and then. I don't think too often, though. Eclipse Dragon. Seven mana, seven five. So not the best stat line, kind of kind of weak. You'd prefer it to be a five seven over a seven five, but it's it's all right. And it's very interesting. It has a daybreak and nightfall effect. So on one half, uh, it's going to the, the next celestial unit or dragon unit you play. It's going to cost two two less on daybreak. So when it's the first card you're playing of the turn, it's going to grant you tempo. But if it's the second card you're playing a turn and you're triggering it for nightfall, you're going to create a random dragon follower and celestial follower in hand. So you're going to get you're going to essentially be drawing two cards. So on one hand, you get tempo. On the other hand, you get card advantage, which that's just fantastic. I think this is just great top end for a dragon deck. It's just going to give them... Having the option to choose between tempo and card advantage on one card is just excellent. Excellent card. And then we have... Car oh, man, how do you pronounce this one? Car Cardrigan, the Infernal. Cardrigan is a 9 mana 9 6 fury. When I'm summoned, grant all other dragon allies everywhere, plus two, plus two. So if you cast this, all your boys become bulky. This is th this is like the the Avaros and Hearthguard for dragons. Expensive Avaros and Hearthguard for dragons. I'm My first impression is dragon decks probably aren't actually going to be playing this card. But maybe they are. Maybe they are. But I, I kind of think dragon decks are going to be faster and they, they won't be interested in this but i i very well might be eating my words on this one it's very possible that card that this card just sees play as a three of in dragon decks i'm really not sure and that's that's it for for the set so far i think it's gonna be pretty cool shivana is quite neat i'm very excited to play with shivana i'm very excited to play with this uh no nox kyria arena i think um i think the nopify is quite good i think there are a lot of pretty solid cards for the format soraka i'm very excited for I, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with these landmarks. I think landmark is going to be a pretty entertaining mechanic. I'm very excited for it. And I think that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, please do click follow button. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what you're looking forward to. And just, just anything, man. Anything you want to say in the comments, leave it, in the, leave it below. I'm very interested to know what you guys have to say. Thank you for watching the video. And check me out on stream, all that stuff. Bye, guys.